now. And as we were just talking about, there are threats of violence because of Donald Trump, his rhetoric and others. A Pennsylvania man was arrested and charged with making threats against the FBI. Police say Adam Bies is charged with influencing, impeding, or retaliating against federal law enforcement officers. Agents say Bies recently posted a variety of threats on the far-right website Gab following the search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. According to the affidavit, Baez compared federal agents to the KGB and Nazi officers and threatened to kill them. Mm. He was arrested late Friday. Let's bring in contributing writer for The Atlantic and senior fellow at the Trinity Forum, Peter Weiner. Pete, good morning. It's good to see you. And your latest piece for The Atlantic is titled, Now They're Calling for Violence. In it, Pete writes, in a sane world, a partisan Republican reaction to the FBI's search of former President Donald Trump's Florida home would be something like this. We don't believe Trump did anything wrong. We're skeptical about the Department of Justice's actions, and we will wait to see the evidence before we make any sweeping claims or definitive judgments. Unfortunately, the reaction online in the right-wing media, and even a among lawmakers has been far from sane. It's been unhinged and ominous. Clearly at this early stage, the responsible reaction to what the FBI did is to withhold judgment, to wait and see, to base one's assessment on the facts and the evidence as they become known. But such an approach is alien to the modern day GOP. The entire incentive structure is to use language that is intemperate, belligerent, conspiratorial, even crazed. This week has once again proved there's no rhetorical line Trump Republicans won't cross, no outlandish charge they won't make. It's now all about one-upsmanship, with each person trying to make a more freakish claim than the next. And Pete, as you know, many of these lawmakers anyway doing it cynically, knowing better, um, but it plays to their audience, they think. It fires people up. But unfortunately, reality, which we learned on January 6th and we're seeing again now uh, in scattered cases across the country, is that they speak to an audience that takes that very seriously and will respond with violence. That's right, Willie, uh, and they know it, and that's what makes this uh, even more uh, malicious. Uh, this is, you know, politically speaking, these are hot summer days. You got a lot of dry grass, and these guys are using flamethrowers, uh, rhetorical flame flamethrowers. And we know from history, and we know even from our, our own history, including January 6, that if you use rhetoric that encourages political violence, you often get political violence. Um, and that's where we're going. Fringes have always existed in American politics. What we're seeing now, which is really unusual, even unprecedented for, the, for this country, is that you have a former president and his entire political party mainstreaming these fringes, amplifying their, uh, their worst sentiments, their darkest instincts. Uh, and we're already seeing this play itself out. My fear is it's gonna play out um, worse. They're looking for the January 6th playbook one more time. And you know, Pete, uh, in your, your Atlantic piece, I thought what was so fascinating was you didn't have to go into the bowels of the internet to find uh, hate speech. You quoted one Republican Congress member after another, uh, uh, calling law enforcement agents, calling the FBI the Gestapo, uh, calling them communists, comparing them uh, to, 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 to communists, uh, calling for the defunding of law enforcement, the defunding of the FBI, just just extreme. And we've seen one or two Republicans step forward in the past couple of days trying to debate, trying to push back against that. But, you know, it just reminds me of the fact that when you and I debated each other during the Bush administration and we we had we had ongoing debates, it was about deficits. It was about fiscal policy and it was about foreign policy. Now, these debates are literally about whether violence, uh, focused violence against Donald Trump's opponents is legitimate or not. Yeah, that's that's right, Joe. I mean, this is a party that is basically nihilistic and institutionally arsonist uh, right now. And uh, there's another point that I think is an important one, which is this is evidence, I think, uh, of the growing pathologies in the Republican Party. I think it's sicker now than it was even during the Trump presidency. It's not in that sense a cult of personality, uh, because Donald Trump's mm -hmm. grip may weaken on the Republican Party, but those maladies, those pathologies have been um, spread and unleashed, and they're now manifesting themselves in all sorts of different 
different uh, different ways. But this was not the posture of the Republican Party, even around January 6. I mean, that is that they were not using that kind of rhetoric about Gestapo and so forth. So we're in a situation in that respect that I think is even more dangerous than uh, than January. Six and 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 the, portrays the Republican Party in an even uh, worse and darker light. And and let, let's talk about the first House Speaker, Republican House Speaker in a generation, Newt Gingrich. I've known Newt for a very long time. I know you've known Newt, uh, and he always he never shocks. You can you can be shocked, but not surprised. But just this language again. This language from a former Republican speaker about law enforcement officers. First of all, he suggested the FBI might have planted evidence against Trump. And you quote him as saying, we'd be better off to think of these people. He's talking about law enforcement officers as wolves, wolves who want to eat you, wolves who want to dominate. This is a former Republican speaker talking about law enforcement officers and comparing the FBI to wolves who want to eat you. According to Gingrich, you write, the FBI has, quote, declared war on the American people at such a level and with total dishonesty, we are seeing the ugly face of a tyranny. I just, again... Known this guy for 30 years, and you just you just ask, like you look at Newt, first Republican speaker in a generation. You look at Rudy Giuliani, a guy whose first term in New York City, I know liberals hate when people say this, was remarkable. If you look at the city and how it was turned around, and yes, I know liberals will say well, it was Dinkins who did it, or it was this commissioner or that. Whoever it was, under Rudy Giuliani in his first term, I've never seen a major city turn around like New York City. It's an extraordinary story to tell. And he sold his soul, his political soul, to a failed reality TV host. These people are unrecognizable. At what cost, mm. Pete? At what cost? Yeah, well, the cost is going to be considerable, um, certainly in terms of the cost uh, of history, the cost of their reputation. And when it comes to Rudy Giuliani, it may cost him prison time as uh, as well. You're exactly right, Joe. I mean, this you see figures who know better, who have acted better in the past, uh, who have become different people, different people than they were. I will say about Gingrich. There, I'm not so sure. And reflecting back on him, I think he turns out to be one of the um, significant and and really malignant figures in American politics. I mean, he had this playbook um, back even in the 70s and 80s about the sort of the rhetorical war-like language that he used. It's worse now, but uh, this may be fundamentally who he is. And it's just that, you know, so many of the Republicans, Joe, have shown themselves to accommodate themselves to whatever the environment is. In a way, I guess it's a deep cultural, conservative cultural insight, which is the environment uh, matters a lot. J John Kennedy said that there's a reason that Profiles in Courage was a slim volume. There are not many people in politics or in any arena of human life that have the courage to stand up when it's difficult to stand up, when there's a cost to it. And I think what we're seeing is this radicalization of the party, which started with a base and was amplified by Trump and now has spread. And Republican after Republican after Republican has accommodated themselves to it. So you've now got a situation in which Liz Cheney, who is as conservative as can be, is a pariah in the party, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's been an advocate for QAnon, uh, is more popular than, than she is. Uh, so this this is really a dangerous time. And for people like you and I, who have been part of the Republican Party, it's a painful time because mm. um, this party is, is a dagger pointed at American democracy. And we have to name that. And Mika, yep. just, to, just to add, Mika, to what Joe was saying about Newt Gingrich, you have a prominent Fox News host now saying of the FBI, they've declared war on us, and now it's game on. I won't even get into what Steve Bannon and others are suggesting, but when the stakes are raised that high, 
people will hear that just like on January 6th and say, yes, it makes sense for me to show up at an FBI field office with a nail gun and an AR-15 and take out the people who are trying to take out our president. People hear that. People who, some of them who perhaps are, are not well or have been sort of indoctrinated into this, and they will carry out violence, as Pete writes in his piece. Well, and Willie, the person that you're talking about, the prominent person, and there's several, the bad thing here is they know. Yeah. They know it's irresponsible. They know that Joe Biden won the election. They know January 6th was a violent assault in our capital. They know the truth and they also know that you don't take classified yep. documents away from your office top secret documents look that can only be we don't know where this is going to lead in, 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 in specific places i know we don't know that but the fact that the justice department has said this happened the fact well, and Trump that has Donald confirmed. Trump has admitted that yeah. it happened the fact that he has seven different stories now at last count on what happened Correct. but they all circle back to the fact that he took top secret documents he took classified documents and the one thing that no republican is asking no republican is asking is why did you take classified documents out of the White House? Why did you take top secret documents out of the White House? They don't ask that question because what do they do? They want to investigate the investigators um, when the investigation is on a failed reality TV show host who lost the White House, lost the Senate, and lost the House for Republicans.